in point claire at the corner of hymas boulevard and manford avenue there is a nondescript establishment called the hymas bar resto pub but what exactly is a resto pub and what is the origin of this place to find out we better crank up the wayback machine in 1918 most of north america was enduring prohibition of alcohol the long and complex history of temperance and prohibition in Canada has been well documented elsewhere, so we won't delve into the subject too deeply in this video. In Canada, Quebec was the first province to repeal prohibition in 1919. During prohibition, prostitution was often associated with the speakeasies and blind pigs that had popped up. This stigma persisted, culminating in the Duplessis government passing a law in 1937 banning women from taverns in the name of public morality. This was the genesis of the Quebec male-only tavern. By the 1950s, the main attributes of Quebec taverns were Spartan decor, basic meals at lunchtime, a TV to watch sporting events, and the omnipresent three Bs, beer, butts, and banter. Of course, by this time on Montreal's West Island, there was an unprecedented level of development taking place. Houses were going up, shopping centers were being built, and infrastructure was being developed. Highway 40 was planned out, including industrial parks lining both sides. The West Island even had its own radio station. And remember the FOX 1470. Fox started broadcasting on March 15, 1960. It was located near the intersection of St. John's Road and a new street called Hymas Boulevard that ran between St. John's and Sources Road. Three years later, on May 9, 1963, Mr. Jean-Louis Legault would open the Hymas Tavern on the ground floor of the Seafox building. Lakeside Heights now had its own tavern. Throughout the 1960s, business was good. The Hymas became not just a regular neighborhood hangout, it also provided a great spot to grab lunch and a beer for all the employees of the new industrial park. Real tavern waiters are consummate professionals. They know all of their regulars' beer choices. Of course, back in the day, the brand selection was limited, to say the least. But often as not, your beer would arrive at your favorite table before you even took your coat off. In 1972, a new kid arrived on the block. No, not Stephen, he was already there. It was the Manoir, which for its first few months of operation was a male-only tavern just like the Hymas. At this time, the laws governing taverns in Quebec were evolving, and the Manoir was slated to become a brasserie. Not to be confused with an actual brasserie, which translates as brewery, this designation basically meant a tavern, but open to both sexes of legal drinking age, which had been lowered from 21 to 18 in 1971. With all of the licensing details cleared up, the ladies' welcome sign went up on the front of the manoir in early 1973. Despite the manoir's instant success, the Hymas continued to thrive as a tavern. There were more than enough patrons to go around. The industrial park guaranteed a solid lunchtime crowd at both establishments. Evenings were a different story, however. The manoir was regularly crowded, even on weeknights, while the Hymas saw little change in its evening business. It needs to be mentioned that the Hymas golf tournaments were a source of entertainment, camaraderie, and just plain fun. Of course, after finishing up on the golf course, it was back to the tavern for dinner and a few beers. Attended by both staff and regulars, a great time was had by all participants over the years. The Hymas soldiered on throughout the 70s and 80s. The confusing legalities in Quebec pertaining to tavern permit laws were changing rapidly. In 1978, the Bosse report recommended that all new taverns be open to women. In 1979, Bill 55 granted the right of existing taverns to include women. 
1986, men-only taverns were outlawed. So, it was not a surprise in October 1987 when Mr. Legault briefly shut down the Hymas and moved it from the Sea Fox building to its present location just down the street at the corner of Hymas and Manford Avenue. When the Hymas II reopened, it was licensed as a brasserie, welcoming both sexes to enjoy the new location. A modern decor and an expanded menu attracted new clientele as well as the regulars. Jean-Louis even included a section with the classic tavern chairs that appealed to the old traditionalists. Most of the old staff switched over and were joined by some new faces. For the next five years, the Hymas continued its tradition of solid lunchtime business, but now enjoyed more evening crowds than in the old days when it was a male-only tavern. In 1992, after 29 years of successful operation, Monsieur Legault sold the business to two Greek guys, whose identity WNR has been unable to ascertain. They owned the Hymas for only two years, and sold it to Don Stewart in April 1994. During Don's tenure as owner, the Hymas experienced a sort of renaissance, expanding from regular neighborhood watering hole status to include live music and special dinners like the popular hanging hip of beef. One of the most beloved waiters from the original Hymas was Big Dan, or Danny as he was known to regulars. Dan came back and worked at the new Hymas until he passed away in the early 2000s, and Don hung his picture over the bar to pay homage to this great gentle giant of a man. Well, let's take a look back at a few clips from the Don Stewart era. You know what? I didn't even get Elgi on film there before. Elgi, what do you think about that? Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> Henry, Henry, Henry's here. Oh, the good thing you're here, you can drive him to the home now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> See, this is the fastest service in town. The beer comes to the table before they even come here. Merry Christmas, Kim. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's a pretty serious island old boo right there. Uh oh, Rick's gonna do something here. He's gonna be filling up a pitcher. Yes. 64 ounces of beer coming your way. For sure. Nice hat, Kim. <laughs> you had to get me with this on. Yeah, well. Here. Okay, there, that's better. Here. <laughs> okay, we're uh, here at the Hymas with uh, the current owner, Don. Don Stewart. Um, Don, how long have you owned the place for? I've had it since uh, April of '94, so that's be 16 years in uh, coming April. Wow, and and you're apparently about to uh, hand it over to some new owners. I'm not going to make the 16 years. No, right? Uh, I was sold it as of January 1st. January 1st, and uh, a couple of Portuguese guys bought it. One eh? Portuguese guy. One Portuguese guy. Maybe he'll change it, maybe he'll keep it as a brasserie. Uh, first day that he opens, he's staying exactly the same, and then over the next six months, he'll start to tweak it, uh, do the things he'd like to do. Do you have any uh, memories? Famous memories from your time running the, or too many? Well, I'm going to write a book, so I don't want to give it all away because it will be in the fiction section because nobody will believe it. <laughs> what would uh, what would you say is your most favorite memory of the whole time that you were here? Oh, it's, uh, there's just so many favorite memories. I mean, too last many, night eh? was, a, was a great memory. We had a, a going away party and uh, we had about 150 people in here, but we've had a lot of crazy things going on here. One memory that's also good is when the ice storm. She knew exactly where he was. Exactly. <laughs> and so ended another chapter in the history of the Hymas. 
As of January 1, 2011, the Hymus was under new ownership. Not the previously mentioned Portuguese buyer, but well-known Montreal real estate mogul Peter Sergakis, who had already purchased the Manoir in 2009. In March 2011, a few of us went for lunch to see if there had been any changes under the new management. Well, here we are at the uh, new, new Hymus. We got a club sandwich, but the frits are not real anymore. They're frozen. Rumor has it that they're going to get rid of the Molson next week and uh, go to Labatt, just like the Manoir. We've got 8,000 televisions in the Hymus now. And only one waiter left from the old days. Everybody else has quit. I can't say why. Uh, it might have something to do with the camera. The camera. We got a club sandwich again tonight. Seems the chicken has changed. Pizza looks pretty darn good though. We got pepperoni and bacon pizza. Now that's that a Canadian good. tradition. What's your approval rating here? The chicken looks like it's uh, sliced. Cold cut sliced chicken. Uh oh. It's out of a pack, huh? But at least we can Not watch bad. TV. And we can watch TV. We can watch TV on all 14 streets. We still have the island of booze, but it doesn't appear as if anyone actually buys booze. It's more, uh, more a beer situation. May 4th, 2011 was the last time that WNR visited the Hymas until we happened upon this vandalism incident during the pandemic lockdown on April 12th, 2020. So this is a WTF moment. We just pulled into the Hymas parking lot to make a phone call. And all the windows are smashed in the front, and it, like nobody's here. It looks like it's just happened. Let's move ahead to the present. Well, here we are at the Hymas. There is no more kitchen at the Hymas. The Hymas is now a sports bar and a gambling bar. We have the frozen meals from the Manoir. Oh yeah, we have the frozen meals from the Manoir. <laughs> you can get takeout. Well, this concludes another chapter of microhistory from the West Island of Montreal. Now you know the origins of the Hymas Bar. May 2023 will mark the 60th anniversary of this venerable Pointe Claire watering hole.